Eric Peterson has starred in hit television series like Street Legal and Corner Gas. His latest production is Seeds, the docudrama about Saskatchewan farmer Percy Schmeiser. And Eric joins us now. Eric, welcome to the Kootenays. Have you ever been to this area before? I haven't, you know. I mean, I may have passed, uh, passed through, uh, going through the Crow's Nest Pass years and years and years ago. I'm that old. <laughs> that, uh, so, but this is my first time, you know, actually walking around in the town and seeing the town. Lovely place. So here you are with the Seeds and the, the story of Percy Smizer. Uh, tell us, I guess, first of all, about Percy and, and the role that you are, are now playing. Well, Percy Smizer was the farmer that was uh, sued for a breach of patent in 1998 by Monsanto. Now, uh, this is genetically modified canola, and the, the modification in the canola plant was that it would withstand the herbicide Roundup. Uh, herbicide which Monsanto produces. So this was a genetic engineering that allowed you to spray your field of canola, kill everything but your own canola. It was only introduced in 1996, so uh, everybody on the prairies was pretty unfamiliar with this. Percy got uh, discovered uh, what uh, these uh, seeds in his, it got into his field. Um, and Monsanto then proceeded to say that he had used their seed and hadn't uh, been contracted to do so. Percy's point of view was that they got their, they can they contaminated his field, and anyways the legal battle ensued from there. Percy uh, stood up to this. Uh, it took this challenge to court. He was first found guilty in the first court. In the appeal court, he was found uh, guilty again, and then in the Supreme Court of Canada, it went to the Supreme Court of Canada, and oh. at that point they ruled that the Monsanto would get no damages or uh, costs out of Percy, but they still upheld the patent. If a farmer grows a crop and he retains the seeds, he can subsequently grow crops which inherit this tendency. So, the manner in which Monsanto deals with this product requires that it continually monitor farmers who are suspected of acquiring the seed in other ways, without signing a contract, a process that is sometimes called ground banking. We still believe that Mr. Schmeiser obtained that seed inappropriately from somebody. Now you're from Saskatchewan originally. Was this a role that it must have been close to your heart? Totally something? close to my heart. And I have a small kind of deal with the, uh, with the Saskatchewan government that any fictional character or non-fictional character on film or television or theater, <laughs> man, woman, or child, <laughs> I get the rights of first refusal. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was very interested. I knew of the case, and when uh, Chris Abraham, the director of the play, approached me with it, I was very interested to start work on it. So. The play itself is not a polemic. I'd like to make that clear. I mean, it, this is a theater company that's interested in presenting issues that are um, uh, pertinent and contemporary to um, our society as Canadians, and this was what, what, what attracted them to it. So we get both sides of the, of the legal battle, in a sense. Monsanto's point of view and their motivations are, are made also very clear uh, in, in the play, as well as Percy's. In this case, someone alleges a crime was committed. None of us were at the scene. We don't know what happened. In the judge's decision, you violate Monsanto's patent if it blows on your field or uh, gets on your field regardless of. But now you're worried because your daughter eats this GM canola? Just listen, listen, all right? When Monsanto was developing these products, it was a company filled with brilliant scientists and its customers were farmers. It's been a tremendous satisfaction to me to see how much people get enjoyment out of thinking for themselves as theatrical entertainment, as opposed to people up there preaching to them about what this is or this isn't. <coughs> it's, very, it's been very, very, uh, uh, as I say, illuminating to me to see how much people want to get information about in a complex way about complex issues and think for themselves. Now, I'd be remiss if I let you go without asking how much and in what ways has your life changed since the role of, of Oscar Leroy? Because that's got to be, you must get that a lot. What are you doing? Why do you got to go cluttering up the counter with all this junk? They're called impulse items, Dad. Bah! People don't have impulses. I'm having one right now. How stupid do you think people are? Here's 20 bucks for gas and oh, what's this? Licorice? I know I shouldn't, but I can't resist. <laughs> Here's 20 bucks for the gas. Oh, what's that? The Chris. Well, I know I shouldn't, oh, but I can't resist. Are you being smart with me? 
What? My son sent you, didn't he? All right, you've had your laugh. Now get out of here, smart guy. But I... I said get out. It was great. I was very proud to be part of that. And because I come from Saskatchewan, too, eh? And I had left Saskatchewan years ago to become an actor. So you can imagine the kind of full circle of it. Mm. The thrill of being back in my own landscape again, doing this wonderful <laughs> series that Canadians were watching in, you know, in, by truckloads and uh, feeling very satisfied with that. It's been important to me to, to do Canadian television and, and theater that Canadians like, and it's, that is about us. Mm -hmm. that's, um, that's my take on what we do as cultural workers in a country. And um, Corner Gas, in a comic way, really satisfied that. I got to use my the image of my own father to a certain extent. He wasn't angry like Oscar was all the time, but nobody is. But my dad used to say to me, yeah, that's just stupid. And uh, sometimes when early on in, when we were uh, doing the part and I was trying to get it together, I would think of that. I would do that as a little mantra before I had to do a scene. I'd just go, that's just stupid. And I'd be totally set up to do the scene. I think that's part of the, the reason that the, the character and the show had so much success is we could all we could all relate to Absolutely. the characters. And now, that would be the most common um, remark to me, is that the, I remind somebody of their, their father, their grandfather, or their uncle. Mm -hmm. Have you had any offers to do any TV shows lately? I, what did I do? I've just done, I did, um, last summer I was on uh, What Would Sal Do? Now, I can't remember, it's, it's a cable show. It's going to be on a cable channel. I don't think it's going to be on the networks. But it was shot in Sudbury. I had a wonderful time. It was, a, again, I played an old guy. <laughs> I know that's hard to believe. Go figure. Eh? <laughs> it was great fun. So I don't, keep your eye open. You probably you can find it on the internet someplace where it's being shown. So Great stuff. Well, Eric, thanks so much for taking time out to sit down with us and well, have a chat. And it's my pleasure, and thank you. Yeah.